Hey, welcome to Guilty Gear Zerd with Mr. K. Patch 1.1 came out for Guilty Gear Zerd last week, and I'm going to be, go be going over the Leo patch notes. Okay, let's get right into it. Leo's dash has more range. It's really useful for tick throws and for movement. Here's an example of a tick throw that wasn't possible. Just dash up FD break throw was not possible in 1.0. Now it is. Um, if you don't go as far as is possible now, say you go like the original 1.0 distance, you get there faster. Makes it feel really nice. Makes him a more mobile character. It's very useful in a lot of matchups. Okay, throw range. His throw range was slightly increased. He's not Potemkin. You know, you're not going to be able to chuck people whenever you feel like it. But it's enough to make his tick throws more consistent and make them faster, because you can do them more quickly. You don't have to walk as far, as far before you throw. Okay, dead angle. His dead angle was increased horizontally. Let's see. So there's a move on a dead angle, okay? So like, out here... Ah, didn't connect. Out there it still connects. So it has a lot more horizontal range. Very nice. 5k. 5k has a... Gatling to 6p now. That was not possible in 1.0. You can use this to increase the damage in combos a little bit. So that was 145 damage. Let's give an example of a 1.0 combo. 137. You get a little bit more damage, you get a little bit more time to hit confirm. You can mix up your block strings a little better. It's useful in juggles because you can go 5k, 6p into jump S. Um, there is a problem with it in that if you are. if they're blocking, the 6p tends to whiff. Here we go. So same like out here. The 6p whiffs completely, right? But close slash works, but 6p does not. So I don't think that you should always use 6p after 5k. In fact, I think that's a terrible idea. I think that close slash is much more consistent. But it's a very useful combo option. And it's a little option to, you know, if you want to do something a little bit different with your block strings, you can do it. You can crank the guard bar a little bit better with it too. Okay, close slash. Close slash has more range vertically. So here's an example of a combo that probably wouldn't have worked in 1.1. Right. So if they get really high, close slash tended to whiff. It still whiffs a little bit if you are really greedy with it. Um, but it has more reach now, so... Unless you push it to the extreme, you're not going to notice. It's really nice for consistency stake. It has a bigger hurt box, too, so that you can't do burst safe combos with it. You know, maybe they were concerned about that. Uh, you can still block burst after hitting them with close slash, though, so that's not a big deal. Okay, 5k to 6p is now a gap. I already talked about that. 5D. So 5D has more range. That would not have worked in 1.0. This feels really nice with Leo. Right, so it doesn't go all the way to the sword, which is a little silly. But it goes almost all the way to the sword, and so... You can throw out his safe unblocked dust a lot more. Right, you say, like, you're, like, here. That works. You know, you can do little mix-ups. They can still block in reaction, of course. It's a very slow overhead. But any buff is nice. You can do it in combos a little better now, too. It's not really relevant, but makes combos easier. Okay. Crouching S. So Crouching S has n used to have proration on it. It had 90% proration, which means that it used to make combos do 10% less damage after Crouching S. Now it doesn't. So this will do about 10% more damage than it did in 1.0. Which is nice. Okay. Crouching Heavy. So Crouching Heavy has more horizontal range. If you're at start distance and you throw this out against Elf Belt, now it will counter hit her 5 Heavy and you get 220 damage. It's also very useful in hit confirms. I'm going to try to do it on the first try, but you know, I might drop it. Ah, I forgot the combo. There we go. 
So that was pushing the range of Kraken Heavy to the max. And now it's a little farther, so you can do Stand Kick into a little heavy pretty, pretty consistently, especially on hit. On block, this might still not work. <laughs> Which, you know, you, sh you shouldn't throw it out if you're not sure it's going to work. But, you know, it's, it's good. Any buff is good. Jump K. Jump K. Hitbox and Hurtbox were increased. So, there were times in 1.0 where in combos... Ah, let me get to that same combo. So, like, jab, jab, kick, slash. See how that doesn't work? That used to happen a lot more. And you had to do jump K, um, jump S there to make sure that you could get a combo. But now jump K has a little bit better hitbox, so it's less likely to happen. I think they nerfed the uh, hurtbox on it so that it's a little easier to anti-air. Which is fine, you can anti-air it now. It's still really oppressive. Uh, jump S is a better an anti-air or air-to-air -air in this game. Because they increased the hitbox horizontally. Excuse me, vertically. So, say someone's above you, you know, Leo's like attacking upwards, right? If they're up in that direction, you're probably going to win. It feels really strong. It's, it's something that really fills a hole in its game. So it's a good thing that they made that buff. His jumping heavy now has more range horizontally and has a bigger hurt box. So it's easier to hit him out of it. But it's also a lot stronger as a poke. Um, you're not really going to get much at like far range, but you can still buffer into Seek Spray. You can uh, cancel into Seek Spray a little later with this move now. So that was a little delayed. So that's just a little consist consistency buff, you know, make people's lives a little bit better. I like that. Okay. Oops. Okay, now on to the specials. So, his Slash Fireball has more horizontal range. Goes a little bit far. It doesn't go full screen. It still evaporates into weird yellow stuff. But, it goes a lot farther, and it's very useful for countering zoning. You know, say someone wants to move a little bit. They can't, like, be here. Right, the fact that that hits right there is really useful. And it's a little bit better on YRC now. You can still YRC IAD in for free. Um, the heavy fireball, the only thing they changed on it, the biggest change they've made for it is that it moves a lot slower now. Right before I used to like gain momentum after it got going, now it just kind of peters along. It's taking a little Sunday, Sunday drive, right? So it's a lot easier to be really grimy with it because the fireball's coming, but it's just going to take a minute, right? So you can do a lot more offense before it gets going, you know. Stuff like that. And if they block the 5D, for example, there, then they have to block the fireball and you get to do more offense anyway. Uh, setups off of Rekka, for example, they're all pretty much the same. They feel pretty much the same. Um, you get a little bit more time to confirm, you get a little bit more frame advantage, which is nice. On both the fireballs listed on the patch notes is that they expanded the hitbox downwards. I don't know why they did this or how much they did this. It doesn't feel like that much. So, say so Soul does like Grand Viper, right? He's still going to go underneath your fireball. Um, I haven't found a move that works in 1.0 to low profile the move that doesn't work in 1.1. Um, but it's in the patch notes, so it's probably relevant to someone. Okay. Now his Rekkas. So first Rekka is completely the same. Second Rekka, they buffed it. I, I consider it a buff, and I'll explain why. Uh, what they did is they reduced the pushback on it, right? So you end up closer to the opponent. Makes it easier to do follow-up pressure. You can do kick, punch, kick. If you do, for example, his cross-up move, course forward heavy. You can't actually do the same confirm, right? You just gotta go kick slash instead of kick punch. Um, it's still his second Rekka is still minus four on block, so they can still interrupt you there. But they can. You have options that are stronger now if they just choose to block. 
And his third Rekka now is throwing vulnerable. So say Leo wants to use Rekka some pressure, right? And you're like, well, I'm not going to let that happen. Right, I'm going to instant block the second Rekka. I'm going to throw him. Right, well, now, if he just goes third Rekka like a, you know, a very silly person, you get counter hit. And you're like, why did I try to throw that? That's throwing bone. So he at least has something now that you can force someone to respect the second wreck a little bit better because they can't throw it every time, right? I mean, they can actually, they don't even have to instant block to punish. They can just block the second wreck and throw. So now you have one more option to make, keep the mix up going. You know, you're still in a, in a risky situation when you do second wreck out. You're still minus four on block. You know, if they mass jab, They'll, they'll beat everything you do if you stop, right? So, like, say you, you do that, and you do that, and they match jab, you lose. So you're gonna... You, you both, you and the opponent are in a guessing game. That's fine. It's not really supposed to be a mix-up tool. It's just kind of a gimmick. Still is a gimmick. It's a little bit better gimmick now. Six Parade. Six Parade has... more frame advantage on hit. It is now plus three instead of plus two. That means that the opponent has less time to buffer specials, try to buffer a back dash, blitz shield, everything. If they want to try to jump, uh, Seek Spray into the back ring kick is very consistent at catching them now. There's a two frame timing for it on most characters. Say they have like a four frame jump, jump startup, which is the standard jump startup, um, where they're airborne on frame four, right? Six parade into back turn kick. It's now a two frame link to catch the jump. So that makes them respect your offense after six parade, which is really nice. They can't just like fuzzy jump out, be like, I'm out. Um, it can no longer be bursted at all. So say you do something like this, and they think they just can't burst. Um, they did this to stop a glitch where they you would get hit by the first hit of Six Parade and then you would burst and then it would whiff. So then Six Parade would pull you out on the second hit and then you could actually get like a combo restart. And you can Rumble Cancel that into another 5v. It was great. Um, they don't like fun though. You know, glitches are no fun. That's fine. Okay. So his half circle back forward is super that's slashy super, right? This thing. They say they nerfed the invulnerability on it, but it still feels like a ton. And this still works, which is the, really like the biggest use of the super, is that you do a button and you cancel on the super, and if they burst, they get hit, right? And if they don't burst, they get hit because it's a combo. So that still works. If they nerfed it, they didn't nerf it like hardly at all. So that's good. His back turn D can now be wired seed on startup. Uh, that was a bad example. There we go. You have to do it pretty fast though. Like you cannot delay it at all. Basically, if the shield comes out completely, you can't do it. Um, I feel like this is actually not a strong option because in the situations where you're going to do his back turn D, it's debate like an uppercut, right? Or say someone's mashing jab. Well, if you do the back turn D wire C. Once they do that jab at a very specific timing, like you, you're giving yourself like a three frame window where you're, you're expecting the jab to come out, right? And if they don't do the jab there, they do the jab on say on frame four, right? Well, you wire see the back turn D and then you lose 25, 25% meter and then you get hit by their jab and then they get a combo. So you guessed right, but <laughs> you guessed wrong. Um, it's not the sort of thing that you're going to do every time on back turn D. If you want to commit to the counter, commit to the counter most of the time still. You know, people tend not to punish it anyway. So, it's there. I think they did it more as like a philosophy philosophy thing. You know, you should be able to wire C stuff, so let's make it wire Cable, but not really that strong. Uh, his Brynhildr stance... Cancel? 
the the two two is now a lot faster. It's only five frame difference, but it feels way different. So that means that say you like you they block your stance mix up right, and you do like a bad one right like this, you're safe. That's basically safe. You know they'd have to like run up at you like a complete moron to punish that. Um, it also means that tick throws are a lot stronger in Brynhildr stance. Especially off 6 crit. I was surprised that you could actually do this. Ooh, it didn't work there. There we go. So you can just barely time your throw to hit them right out of 6 crit, and it gives them another mix-up option. Makes the back turn kick a little bit stronger as an option because they're going to try to throw or jump out of the throw attempt, right? But, you know, that beats both back turn kick beats both those options. Okay. His back turn quarter circle back S or 214S, right? The the dry, right? The third Rekka that you can do by itself. That now, it still does the ground tumble, right? But just like Fafnir, they nerf the duration of the tumble. But now it also knocks down, so they can't tack at the very end and pop in the air. That's nice. And you can still... Oop, try again. This is a little hard. I haven't practiced this very much. I probably should practice some more. There we go. That's a knockdown. You can do a little combo there still. You know, you can do a juggle there. I'm not going to show it right now, because I probably messed it up. Um... So, like, in terms of use, it's exactly the same, right? You just, like, throw it and be like, I hope this works. And if it gets counter hit, you get hooked up, you know, and you, you do, like, a corner combo, right? Woo. Okay. The only nerf that Leo received... The only thing that was the change, like... This is the only move that was really nerfed overall, is his 6P. His 6P still has the same anti-air capabilities, but it has two more frames of recovery on it. So it's minus four on block, and if they, if you whiff it when you're trying to anti-air someone, you're a little bit more punishable. All it really means is that if you whiff a 6P, you can't just like mash 6P out again against their, their jump. Um, I'm fine with that change. It still recovers really fast for a 6P. You know, you can still flex with Leo, right? Show them your muscles. Alright, so that's all I really got for the patch notes. Uh, it might not be conclusive, you know, maybe there's something that they missed. Um, I only use things that I could confirm myself, or I saw on the patch notes themselves. So if there's any other changes that you guys have found out, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you have any questions about what I said, or the terminology I used, feel free to ask that as well. Thanks for listening, and I hope I see you guys later.